Kingston Film Fans. Um, oh, it's up. Again, where are we looking? Wait, you can look straight at the camera. That'll oh, be fine. Rather than me, can ignore me because I'll just pull funny faces and oh, look at you. Yeah. No, I'll just. Well, but it's about it's about the same. I'm about here, so if you if you look in at me, it's fine. Direction. In my general direction, it is fine. Okay. And I just look at each other. Exactly. Just stare at each other, other. lovingly. Doesn't you look fantastic? <laughs> <laughs> Looks great, camera. <laughs> Badass bomb. Do you know what's hilarious? <laughs> it's the, the, this, this lady's first action film. And she's like, yeah, I did a bit of boxing before Vengeance and all the rest of it. So it's not even a martial arts. It's great. Brilliant. So <laughs> well, that, there's a good point because you've just come from, like, you know, Emmerdale, which everybody knows you're from. And then all of a sudden you're in this action film, this potential blockbuster. And I will say British classic and will be. Thank you very much, because it's that good. Look at it, look at <laughs> Brian's like, absolutely. But no, but it is, it's an action, it's a bigger one. Really. Right, okay. And then I'd always loved doing combat, you know, yeah. training at drama school and things. But then this just, this came up and I knew Diane, I'd worked with Diane on a Channel 4 drama, yeah. Missing. And I just got into, I knew she was casting it, so I was... John Gold. Military cross. He was a one-man war machine. He all but disappeared just over three years ago, and he's been completely off-grid ever since. Oh, would you look at that? A real-life ghost. Let's talk about the film, and let's leave the poster to one side, and let's talk about it, Paul. What about the film? So for those who have not seen it or want to tune in and see it, give us a brief outline of what they can expect. I suppose I should probably do that. Yeah, I think you should. We could take it in terms of see. <laughs> yeah, see, <laughs> see, what, see, see what you bring. Let's see Vengeance. how we get one with it. Vengeance is about this female soldier called Bart. Yes. <laughs> well, well, There's the men in it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It could do a different take. So we'll do Ross's first and then we can get Brian and Blur's take on. Can we do my first? Yeah, go on. It's about this really hot female soldieress called uh, Barnes. Mm -hmm. uh, and she makes her way through, you know, beating people up all the way through the town devotion. And it's all really about her, secretly. The whole film's a subtext about her and her thought process. Stu just happens to cross the frame every now and again. <laughs> I wish that was the film we made. Barnes, it's a Barnes and Marshall. That's the film Barnes and Marshall. It's just all about Barnes and Marshall. It is it? really. Badass Barnes and Mad Marshall. Those brief interactions that they actually yeah. have together. All it's, that. It's all about them, really, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, so it's bubbling underneath. Yeah, so yeah. is it like moms? Mars. 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 Or is Mars. it like Mars. a very Barsh. 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 a good name, actually, for a character. He's called Barsh. Our child, our child born into the world. Barsh. Vengeance. Barsh. Vengeance 2. Barsh. Barsh. Vengeance 2. Barsh. Barsh. Vengeance 2. Barsh. Barsh. Come on. It's a winner. Barsh. 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 Forget, forget Vinny Jones, I've heard the rooms. Yeah. Okay. Barshall. Yeah. We've got Barshall. Okay, so it's all about their future love chat. Hashtag Barshall. Vinny Jones comes back for the future as your love chat. It's a great thing. He's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, he's no. Oh, well, there you go. I know. He needs to crack on with Avengers that. Three. That's he's got. He's got. Avengers three. Hashtag Barshall. Yeah, you could do. Hey, look, the second one's coming. So, but let's enjoy the first one first, and enjoy a couple of uh, things we talked about. One, what's going on with um, Gary's moustache? And oh, that was a stroke of genius, by the way. Uh, whoever came up with that, though, it's brilliant. Also, Ansel, Brian, <laughs> shaving yours off. Himself. Yes. Oh, great. That was his prep for the film. How do you do yours? Um, I buy them off eBay. Right, that's <laughs> also, the opposite of that, you shaved yours off. Oh, so what was all that about? Well, the thing was, there was too many stubbly men. <laughs> and I was the last thing with the wardrobe, and all the guys said, they're all keeping stubble, you're going to need a clean shave. And I was like... <laughs> Flipping like it. Head head yeah, yeah. Without a beard. This is why, you know, it's all part. Go on, I'm, I'm sure there's beard. a sensible answer to this. How that's the truth. <laughs> How are you going to edit this? I have no idea. <laughs> Very <laughs> carefully. Uh, the actual, is that a podcast with one still image? Serious, <laughs> Good job it wasn't the live. Actual, the actual reasoning behind these things yes. was sort of uh, the producer, one of the producers, John Adams, uh, is a uh, military man or from the military. Uh, and when we were talking about how the men would have their, you know, their face fur, uh, he was talking about the sort of things that would legitimately be allowed in the special forces. I think a couple of the guys didn't take any notice of that, but that's another story. Uh, but that was discussed. Uh, and that was also why, in the end, I mean, you probably have to speak to Gary specifically, but that, I think that's the only way he adopted the moustache. 
And uh, I, no one, he's never looked like that before. He's, the, he's never had that look before. He, and it's different. It, well, it, it did it's catch me. I mean, I, I've looked, obviously watched a lot of films with Gary in, those kind of films, martial arts films, so obviously all the time. So all of a sudden it struck me right away. I was like, wow. And it kind of fitted the character. If it was compulsory throughout the cast, you might have been in trouble. Uh, Brian would have been all right. <laughs> I had to shave. Yeah, daily. Yeah. See, yeah, that's, that's um, the way to that do it. That was essentially a bit. <laughs> I'm not even going to tread that path <laughs> at all. <laughs> Carry on, Moss. I'm um, so, no, no. <laughs> but also with Brian as well, again, you're, it's rare that we see you clean shaven in a film as well. So yeah. it, just, it was nice to sort of have a, a different... We could list them, but it's about 30% clean shaven um, and 70%. Is this I, like an IMDb list? You know, when the interview goes out, it'd be like um, hashtag uh, grooming advice. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. Yeah. Oh. You get a free shaving kit with yeah. the DVD card. Exactly, right? with the That's DVD awesome. vengeance. Awesome. It's oh, got free shaving. Like, <laughs> like that. We can have stencils. <laughs> well, we, we can have stencils of everybody's facial hair. You could like yourself, it. Stu, Gary, Fan Boys. Fan Boys. Fan Boys. Fan Boys. Love it. Do we? Yeah, it's quite good. It's just marketing oh, it's a wise. Idea. Yeah. Brand, brand mm. required land. Vengeance approved shaving kit. You best stop shooting your mouth off, pal. Or you're a dead man. Come on! Let's dance. Really? Ross, uh, influences for the film. Uh, strikingly, Commando is, is all over it, left, right, and centre. There's a bit of Get Carter in there, and you sold me a bit of Pale Rider, and you can see that with obviously Stu's performance of what you're trying to get out of it. Yeah. Uh, those kind of the, the genres you're thinking about when you're writing a script for this kind of film? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to remake Commando till someone pays me to remake Commando, <laughs> to be blunt. Uh, and Get Carter has been a touchstone for a long time, as yeah. well as films like Point Blank. Mm. You know, the original like blank uh, and westerns to do it. I'm not the biggest western fan, but for a specific western that I've loved, like Power Rider, Outlaw Josie Wales, uh, Unforgiven, and look, there's loads of others. Open Range is excellent as well. Uh, but it, because of the setting of the film, or what we ended up having as the setting of the film being this sort of fictional village in sort of southern counties, fake UK. Um, there is that feel of a Western, a contemporary Western. We didn't, yeah. want, we didn't want to have Western tropes necessarily, but the setting lends itself to that. You've, yeah, you've got that kind of Clint Eastwood kind of power. Right? You can you can feel it underneath if, if you yeah. watch. And I know you're much of a fanboy um, like we are, so you know we spot those, I guess, as fans. So uh, we appreciate um, what you put in there. The other aspect of that, in fact, story-wise, is, of course, a lot of those films like The Magnificent Seven, obviously based on The Seven Samurai, is like a group of powerful guys have taken over this small district, this small village, or whatever, yeah. one way or another. It's not necessarily official, but there's sort of the nod of the hat to that as well. Not towards it. Um, quickly, Brian, I, I need to ask you because one of my favourite films of last year, and I need to bring it on now, was, was Chasing the Dragon. I, I love that film, Donnie oh. Yen. It was, mm -hmm. you know, and you play a pretty badass in that as well. How right. did that come about? Because you were doing kind of other work and then all of a sudden yeah. you pop up in this, which was, you know, our favourite film of last year, Eastern Film Fans, Chasing the Dragon with Donnie Yen, and you play a great part in it, and it was just like, all of a sudden, Brian Larkin, what, what's Brian doing in it? Can right. you, what, go on. Well, actually, all credit to Ross. It was Ross who put me in the frame for that part. Ah, OK. Um, we had a lot of fun. Did we have a lot of fun making Vengeance? I think I cried on your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I cried on both yeah, your yeah, shoulders. That was yeah. the rough part to need a little bit to drink. Yeah, yeah, in that nice. first shoot, even, in that mansion, mm. I sort of revealed a oh, little yeah. something. Yeah, it was quite early on the shoot. Mats. Yeah, yeah, the crash mat. Yeah, the crash mat. Amazing house. Yeah, there was that room, wasn't there? Ah, yes. It's kind of a weird part to hop, isn't it? Yeah, it was great. I mean, we had a great time for the Vengeance. Anyway, back to me. Chase the Dragon. Chase the Dragon came about. Ross put me in the frame, the casting director, the great Mike Leader. Yeah. Cast a lot of the films out there. Yeah, yeah. Was looking for a white guy. And I don't think that they managed to find who they were looking for in Hong Kong, the local actors. Um, and then my name was thrown into the mix, and Ross was kind enough to recommend me, God knows why, for the part. Um, I wanted him out of the country. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's get, let's get, Wait, let's get, get yeah. While I was editing, I wanted him as 
far away from me. Because he knew I would be looking over his shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can I see it? Yeah. Knock, knock. Can I see it? Yeah. Can I see I'm it? I'm going to wave and oh, take right. it in front of that loud Okay, just moving my way out, out of the country. That's the kindest way to get rid of Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's nice. Exactly, yeah. So, and I had self tape for it. Okay. There, Good. there, there yeah. wasn't a, an English uh, language version of the script, so Mike had given me a couple of scenes from other movies, and he did five things. It was like one of them was from a scene from uh, like uh, what was it? Uh, it's another action film or something. Uh, but they changed all the references to America to Hong Kong. So okay. instead of like uh, Boston, it was like Kowloon, and I was like, okay, I spotted that. So that was the uh, self tape. A couple of weeks later, and I got it, and I was over there. And what an amazing experience! Yeah, I was, I was on and off for seven months, working with Donny and Andy. Yeah, and it was. Uh, I mean, there's a lot I could say about it. But Actually, it was, just, just it doesn't connect to you a little bit. You will see Tommy later, but you're a massive fan of Andy. Man. Yeah, I've yeah. been a massive fan of Andy since the Infernal Affairs days. Yeah, brilliant. And that was yeah, yeah. made a huge impression on me that movie. But yeah, and then jumps. my experience in working with Andy was, I was filming another scene. It's actually cut from the movie. It was like a volley water volleyball scene. And all the cops, all the corrupt cops out in the pool, right? Mm -hmm. And then I get this tap on the shoulder and so I said, we're going to cut, probably going to cut this scene. Um, you need to do a scene with Andy. He's over there waiting for you just now. So you need to get out of your bathing costume <laughs> and your police uniform. And Andy's standing there waiting on me. And I'm like, so what's the scene? We don't actually know yet. <laughs> so no that's what way. it was like. Ma oh, well, wow. Because we have the boots in the film. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You kinda... We had to sort of organically come up with something. Yeah. And that's when Mike had stepped in and says, well, you're these corrupt cops, you're working together, so <laughs> give something. Yeah, give me something to say. Well, who's got higher status here? He says, well, you go in with a higher status, tell him what to do, and he's going to disagree with you. So we just winged yeah, it and we did it. See, that's that, that, that. Yeah, I mean, that's fair play, that's testament to, to acting, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you pick something with nothing, given a little bit, and then just roll with it. It's all what it's all about. <laughs>
Uh, what do you mean? Oh yeah, it's really good fun. Right, what you need to do now is watch Commando twice. Like in a row, like watch it, and then you watch it again. And he was like, why? Just do that. <laughs> and then sometime after that shoot, well, I was on the phone to him and he said, yeah, I've seen, I've seen, yeah, I watched it twice. So I was like, well, he was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that matters. So you got it. You got it. Come on, though, twice. You need to watch it twice. So, so we ask Ross uh, what films he take on the desert island. I don't know what he's going to put in there. Really um, good, right. just go. One, two, three. Superman go. movie. Yes. Some kind of wonderful and singing in the rain. Ah, see, mm. wasn't expecting that, was it? I, I yeah. Actually, I didn't expect that. You didn't no, I don't. Do that. But I think it's just. Have you even asked this question before? Possibly, but it's also true. Like, as in, okay. in my top ten, I lo look for action films. Yeah, um, my top ten movies. There are no action films. Not, not, or not that you would call action films. They are still very close. I love them all. And stuff. Mm. If I have to pick ten, my top ten. That's action. why it's quite diverse because when you ask it's people, you expect a certain answer, and it's not always the answer that people expect. And then all of a sudden, when they watch the films, they get a little bit of the sense of the favourite films all of a sudden coming through in different aspects. So if you're an action fan, all of a sudden you're looking at other things that perhaps, yeah. you know, maybe Singing in the Rain has an influence on somewhere in that because it's a favourite film. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Jackie Chan, Buster Keaton. Sorry, Brian. I know we, we've favorite. had some. Right there, while Ross Which took over. Three of your films you said. Oh, I'm not saying there are no other films that I don't do that. That's watch enough. replay, I don't watch my own. Movie. That's enough about you. You've seen more of my films than I've seen. That's enough. That's enough about you. What about? That's enough about me. Mm. What about you? What do you think about me? <laughs> Well, let's talk about that later. Yes, let's uh, go. What three? I yeah. would probably say Goodfellas. Braveheart yes. and Taxi Driver. I want to thank um, you all for joining us today at Eastern Film Fans and I wish you all the success in the future. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.